Hi, I'm Todd Rosewood, Head of Research at Vetify, and thanks for joining us for another episode of ETF 360. I'm joined today by Nick Cherney and John Kirshner, and we're here to talk about JAAA, which is Janice Henderson's CLO ETF. Guys, thanks for joining me. Nick, why do you think ETFs are the wave of the future? Well, uh, that's 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 bold, wave of the future. Um, look, I, I think that there is certainly an increase in ETF adoption um, that has been, you know, accelerating and, and it's a, you know, multiple decade story. But, um, you know, I think for a lot of uh, particularly newer asset classes, uh, unique exposures, um, some of the more non-traditional uh, investment management products, ETFs have just become sort of the default vehicle. And so you see people moving to ETFs for, for a, a range of reasons, but you look at, for example, thematics or a lot of the innovation that's happening in ESG, um, a lot of the stuff that we're doing in fixed income, as we kind of develop or identify new areas where we think there's a possibility to bring our asset management capabilities um, in, in a slightly different way, often we're, we're, we're going to ETFs. And so I think it's a combination of underlying demand and accessibility, as well as it's just an area where there's a, a lot more product innovation happening today. Um, but we don't see that as being sort of counter to um, many of the other vehicles that people are, are using to access asset management services. So we, we really see it as a broadening um, uh, a, a, a across a, a wide range of clients. Nick, what is the biggest mistake you think ETF investors are making? Well, I mean, today it's fear. I really think it, 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 there is there's a lot of fear. It's a difficult market, right? Um, you can look at equities. Obviously, um, a lot of dislocation going on there, and people unsure. We've been in um, you know over a decade of a fairly simple buy the dip strategy in equities has has been quite successful, and 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 this dip is quite uh, prolonged relative to what we've seen in, in um, really post global financial crisis. So there's a lot of concern in equities. Fixed income has obviously gone through an incredibly challenging uh, market environment this year. And so people are unsure what to do there with rising rates. Uh, you see similar things in the real estate market. Um, you know, a lot of concerns around how the Fed's going to sort of bring us uh, uh, bring us down from, from some of the inflation issues that we're seeing. And the problem, of course, is that with inflation, um, it, it leaves you not many places to hide. And so I think you do see people potentially allocating more to cash, more to short duration, than, um, than is really reasonable given the inflationary environment. And so um, it's fine to be conservative, but if you don't identify areas that can give you positive real returns, um, you know, the cash is not, is not very safe in, in, in today's markets. And so I really think that's the most critical thing that we're talking to folks about is, is how to handle uh, a, a challenging market combined with inflation that people haven't really dealt with since literally the 70s. John, why should advisors take a closer look at CLOs as part of their portfolio? Thanks, Todd. As uh, Nick said, there's a lot of fear out there. Um, and so CLOs are a, a good solution to confront that fear. And why is that? First of all, because they are floating rate. Um, most of fixing, vast majority, probably more than 95% of U.S. fixed income is fixed rate. So when interest rates go down, bond math tells you that prices our interest rates go up, bond prices go down. Uh, floating rate securities are, are just the opposite. As interest rates, particularly the Fed funds rate goes up, that resets the coupon higher on floating rate securities. So you're getting more coupon income, more yield. Um, and, and adding floating rate securities to a portfolio helps get your portfolio closer to that efficient frontier. Secondly, they're high quality. Uh, usually the go-to for floating rate securities or in the past has been leveraged loans. The problem with the leveraged loan market is you're taking a lot of credit risk. Over 60% of that market is single B or lower. Um, uh, AAA CLOs, obviously AAA, much less credit risk. And then finally is just liquidity considerations. The two highest volume trading months for CLOs were number one, March of 2020, and number two, March of 2022, very dislocated, very challenging markets. The trading volume actually peaked for CLOs in those markets. John, why do you think JAAA has grown so much in particular in recent year? Yeah, I mean, first of all, just for those reasons I mentioned, right? We're getting out the message that this is a way to confront that fear, enhance the portfolio, and use the Fed rate hikes as a tailwind instead of a headwind that most of fixed income is getting. Secondly, um, 
before we launched JAAA, there was no liquid product available to investors, or at least small investors, to invest in this space. CLOs trade at a minimum size of 250,000. So if you wanted a diversified portfolio, you really needed to invest millions of dollars in, in this product. Um, now with JAAA, you obviously don't need to do that. And then the ETF wrapper is, wrapper is ideally situated given the liquidity, transparency, and low fees that e ETFs offer investors um, that's very attractive to people right now. Thanks, guys. Really great insights. Wonderful to learn about JAAA. Thank you for joining us, and thank you, everybody, for tuning in to the latest episode of ETF 360. Till next time.